Let's look forward now. Let's uh, see what you've got. I mean, you know, year three, we're on the, the mm. home stretch. And uh, things that you want to see happening over the next 12 months before we do the next interview, <laughs> what would you like to be Well, I'm on? a very impatient individual, as you know, Paul, from all the interviews we've done over the years. Um, I want to start seeing actual physical delivery. on. The, in terms of health, I want to see physical delivery on the ground. Uh, in terms of the Sir Jonathan Michael mm -hmm. review recommendations. Obviously, private patients will have come up by the time we do our next one, so yeah. that should be in situ. Um, I want to see reform of the children's mental health area so that there is an autism pathway spread out and an absolutely crucial one that I've already said will be delivered in this financial year, the ME pathway as well for those suffering from ME. Right. That needs to be up and running. Which exactly it's the Jonathan Michael, I mean we talked about it in part one, but you just, you know, Jonathan Michael, you, you, you want to take the whole lot or you just want to cherry pick it out? I mean, well, no, I mean, Tim Wood's approved all 26 recommendations and, and we should be working. All, We're not yeah. going to get them all in place in the next 12 months, right, but, you, but you we should work be working towards all 26 of those. I'll I'll give two prime examples, yeah. if I may. Uh, we should be um, working on the air ambulance service in order to actually make sure that we've got a more robust air bridge with the UK for those who need to be transferred, which is one of the recommendations. We should also be starting the development, crucially, of Manx Care, the organisation that is going to run the delivery on the ground. That's a very important thing, isn't it? This it's whole, you're crucial. moving the whole thing out of where it is, yeah. putting it into cabinet offices, such as. Where's, where's it no, 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 no. That, that's that's not quite that's correct. Not I don't, don't start those rumours. <laughs> Going for goodness sake, Manx Care Manx go on, explain to me. <laughs> You'll get my phone ringing off the hook over the next week if that's going out. It's moving. Right. The transformation team sits in cabinet office, and the transformation right. is being delivered within cabinet office. Right. But in terms of Manx Care, that is the new delivery organisation within health. Where's that sit? So it so it will sit within the Department of Health, but it, but separate from the department. Oh, it right. will have a board that is the. So it's a bit like a hospital trust yeah, in the yeah. UK. Is probably I'm glad the you that. Because I must admit, I yes, no, no, don't well, start. Well, right, we don't edit these things. So I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry, I got that wrong. Don't blame him, blame me. But how important is that sort of thing? For instance? Well, that's crucial. That's a linchpin. Yeah. yeah. Um, if we don't deliver Manx Care, then we can't start delivering the other changes that we want. There needs to be this separation between delivery and policy. So you will have the department with me sat there as minister, a chief exec of the department, with the policy functions and basically the strategy functions, but in terms of delivery, there'll be the Manx Care Organisation run by a separate independent board to deliver on and the And that will happen when, you hope? At the moment, we're looking for complete delivery for Manx Care to be in place for 2021, but I would expect for 2020 to be obviously the main driver to start getting things in place because as with all these things you'd have to have it running in mirror mm -hmm. with what's there now you can't it's not one of those does, things you can just turn off and turn on does again. it happen anywhere else like this model you're, you're looking at i mean is it somewhere to look at to say this well like i say it's, it's a lot like a hospital trust in the uk it's just like that okay um, it's not it's that. not exactly the same but i think in layman's terms okay. that's the way of putting it it's very similar to the hospital trust model are you enjoying yourself well, hopefully from the last few minutes of the interview, you can see that I certainly am. Um, you do have a passion. I'll give you that. You have, you're have. you always accessible for interviews. I'll give you that as well, which is interesting. But And you haven't seemed to change. Oh, gosh, I'm, I'm saying way too many nice things here. <laughs> Let's get more. Well, I was going to say, we'll get them out of the way and we'll move on to the other no, stuff. Okay, any cracks anywhere? I mean, you, what about being in Comin and all the all the, this you know, responsibility that's shared and everything like that? Well, we'll I, think, I, I think we discussed this last year when I'd you only did. had a very brief, obviously, yes. experience of Comin at that thing, uh, point. And I said, well, actually, people would be quite surprised that when people talk of collective responsibility, you know, people think it's people being whipped into line. <laughs> I haven't found that. What happens in Council of Ministers is we discuss issues, we have arguments as you do, um, but then we come to a consensus opinion. I, I, I have certainly have never had a situation where I've said I cannot support that, I mm -hmm. fundamentally cannot support it, and everyone else has voted for it, yeah. so, you, so I've been told tough, you've got to. Yeah. That's never happened. But in the Council of Ministers, oh, or just straight to Treasury, you go, Miss Cannon, I need more money again. I'm going to be short again. I need more. You know, hopefully that might come to an end. But seriously, are you going now already, months ahead of the budget? Are you already having to work out how much more money you're going to need next year? Well, hang on. Budgetary-wise, we're only halfway through the financial year. We're not even quite halfway yet. Um, we look at it every single month. 
The problem with health spending is unlike a lot of departments where you can take the budget and you divide it by 12 and you have even expenditure, health doesn't. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I could turn around to you now and say the department is completely and utterly on course to meet its budget. I could turn around to you now and say the department isn't on course to meet so its when, budget. Yeah. But that could fundamentally change because you've got the winter months okay, where there's extra pressure on the you, hospital. You want more money, right? And things day, like that. You'll need to go back to Treasury and forecast for next year at some point, I need more yes. money. And that will be done as part of the budget setting process. The department uh, departments every year come forward with business cases, yeah. and it's them for Treasury it's to got prioritise. Money though, it? It's got money. Uh, well, it appears anyway. There's more money in the coffers than we thought. Well, we well don't forget. Well, don't forget as well. If you're referring to the thirty or so million that comes back in, mm -hmm. that's not necessarily money that's going to be there every single year. Mm -hmm. So with health. The important thing is that it's sustainable revenue expenditure because you need that money year after year. There's no point giving health 30 million this year okay. and turning around and saying that 30 million isn't there the year after. How are the potholes? I'm just <laughs> moving you away to other things. <laughs> we talked about things as a constituency, uh, M MHK. Well, that's a perfect point to start on because one of the things I will be pushing on and I'm pushing on now is the roads in Douglas North because to me, Cronkerberry and Tremode to be quite frank, are not up to standard. So you um, into Mr. Harmer's room, are you? So I have been on to DOI about that. Do you do everything behind the, you know, behind the scenes? You're being a minister anyway, and in Coman, there's hardly any point in you asking questions directly about that. Do you leave that to Mr. Peak or something, or do you, you know, how's no, it work? No, no, I, you, I, you I speak to the departments you go uh, direct. To them. Yeah. And in fact, I did when I was a backbencher. Although I, at the time, I believe my first year, I had the ominous record of asking the most questions, did you really? yeah. um, parliamentary questions. I, I didn't just shove everything down as a parliamentary question mm -hmm. because that's pointless. Mm -hmm. You know, a parliamentary question should only be there when you're aiming to change something that isn't going to be changed otherwise, draw the public's attention to something that it isn't going to be drawn to otherwise, or we get some information out there that wouldn't okay, be released otherwise. How's your polls doing then? Have you, you got hope for these people with their badly damaged car suspensions? Well, well certainly I've not, had, um, I've not had negative responses back from DOI, but I'm certainly, and this is what's going to be happening next week, I'm certainly going to be pushing a bit further. Yeah. They've done a wonderful, um, to give DOI credit, um, they've, they've done a wonderful job around Julian Road mm -hmm. and that sort of area, the Glen Park area of the constituency. Um, if they can manage that in Tremode and Cronkerberry as well, I'll be a very happy man. Any comment on the prom? I know it's not quite a new area, but you know, it's still Douglas. Well, it was my area when I was a Douglas councillor. Yeah. Um, obviously, things have been perhaps, certainly from with my Douglas MHK hat on, perhaps a bit more chaotic. Um, than they could have been. I think the Treasury Minister himself has admitted there should have been earlier intervention with the businesses down yeah. there. Um, several of the businesses I do know down there, and I know them well from my days as a Douglas councillor, they are seriously suffering yeah. and they do need support. Um, but when you're trying to do something like the promenade, and bearing in mind it hadn't had any major works since 1936, yeah, it, it was never going to be. It almost looks like the internal camps process. from that era, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, anyway. it, it was never going to be a smooth process, I think. Anyway, you're enjoying yourself. I'm going to think that other things that you, you, you're still going to carry on. Are you going to become a career politician now? Because you didn't want to last time, I think we said, which I can't quite believe. Because you love this stuff. I do, but. You do uh, love it. I mean, I mean I, I'm a bit, I'm, maybe I'm just a strange person, but I, I never <laughs> set myself out as a career okay. politician. And I don't actually. You are a career and politician. I don't, Can well, I, tell you that? I don't feel like okay. one. You keep telling me, and <laughs> others keep telling yes. me as well. But I, I honestly don't feel like one. So you'll be standing again in two years' time? I, I'm going to be bluntly honest, I don't know. Oh. Um, I, no, but I used to do this with Douglas Council as well, yeah. um, and people used to always tease me and yeah. wind me up afterwards as well, and I think you were included in me? this. That really? I never, I never used to decide with no. Douglas Council until about the February with the election in the April. Um, I'll do exactly the same with Keys. I'll probably decide roughly around about Timber Day 21 okay. whether I'm going to carry on or go back into the private sector. I'll ask you the next question. Oh, right. You want to go back into a real... Uh, real so, <laughs> You know what I mean? But, but I, I, you know, I, I've always done that. I've always made the decision yeah. a few months before. I never tie my hands too far in advance. Let's do some numbers. How you do this year? I think seven. Seven. You've, you've gone away long. So yeah. sevens. Safe seven, as I call yeah. it. Yeah. You, you, and this year. I mean, I, I'd actually maybe even bring it down a bit to 6.5, and the only reason being... That's very interesting. Well, well, the reason being, I don't think I've had as much time in the last year to focus on the constituency work as I would like to. You're going to beat yourself up on this. Um, so, you know, I am because I'm bringing it down slightly, yeah. but, I think, but, but I think that's why, but because I've been, I've been so intent yeah. on moving forward the review on health 
Um, I don't think I've been able to get out there in the constituency and do as much constituency stuff, um, which I, which is very unfortunate because I love the constituency work. Do you I work mean, I spent nine people? I mean, do you work together? Uh, yeah, we do. We work very well right. together. Me and Ralph have had brilliant working relationship. Um, you know, he he's done an awful lot out there in the constituency. And in the gentlemen's club, <laughs> I've been very very sarcastic there. Inside the tent, inside Coman, and how's government doing, Minister? Uh, well, overall, in terms of government, again, I go for a seven because uh, I, think I think it was eight still, last year. Um, I, I think um, I think there's I still I think there's still a few down. things. To be we do things by forward. now, right? Yeah, we're going to be um, still sitting here next year, and things haven't yet happened. But and to be honest, a lot of that is down to my Department of Health as well, and making sure that we do drive forward the review. So I think a safe seven is what I'd say in terms of government. Mm -hmm.